In Yu-Gi-Oh, there were some cards which were able to deal such a large amount of battle damage that if you're able to pull off their effects and attack directly or over a monster, you can usually win the game, even if they can't technically get more than 8,000 attack. So in this list, we're going over some of the best game closer cards throughout the history of the game, focusing more on the modern era. And at number 10, we have Cyber Twin Dragon. This card was more of the ultimate win condition in the early days of the game, rather than it was really a game closer, but it did so by creating so much battle damage that it was kind of hard to ignore. There were a lot of combo decks in the past where their whole win condition was basically just getting a level 8 monster on the field, so they could use Metamorphosis on it to cheat out Cyber Twin Dragon, who simply has the effect to attack two times during the battle phase with 2800 attack. Making Cyber Twin Dragon one of the strongest cards in the game that could attack two times unconditionally because a lot of multi-attackers have a lot of conditions on what they're allowed to attack. So if you simply combo the card out with something like Limiter Removal, which doubles its attack for the turn, that's 11,200 points of damage that it's able to put out potentially, which was an insane amount of battle damage in early Yu-Gi-Oh. And really, it's partly because of Cyber Twin Dragon that Metamorphosis was banned in the first place, even though its banned status is usually attributed to Thousand Eyes Restrict. In fact, Cyber Twin Dragon also contributed to Limiter Removal being limited on the ban list for so many years, just because of how good the combo used to be back in the day. And at number 9, we have Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon. This is a generic rank 4 monster which has the effect where it can detach two of its materials in order to cut the attack of one of your opponent's monsters in half, and then give that amount of attack to itself, where both the attack cut and the attack gain are permanent effects. So if your opponent controls a monster with 3000 attack, then Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon would gain 1500 attack and permanently have 4000 attack on the field and a new juicy 1500 attack target to crash into. Now, while this was somewhat of a game closer when the card came out, it wasn't that big of a deal. The main benefits of Dark Rebellion were being able to out hard to kill boss monsters, as a lot of them only have the weakness of being destroyed by battle. However, in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, where the starting life point value is only 4,000, Dark Rebellion is an actual legitimate game closer, and can easily swing the game in your favor if you're able to bring it out. So it definitely deserves a spot on this list for being a generic beat stick of choice in that game, while also having a long competitive history in the regular TCG as well. And at number 8, we have Honest. This is a level 4 monster which has the effect where if a light monster you control battles a monster, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard in order to grant your monster attack points equal to the current attack points of your opponent's monster, which lasts until the end of the turn. So if you use this on something like Cyber Twin Dragon, who has two attacks, it would gain the boosted attack from Honest for both of them and could potentially win you the game. And since Honest just gave whatever monster you had the current attack points or whatever it was attacking, it basically allowed you to attack over anything your opponent had, just as long as you had a light monster with more than zero attack. However, what really turned Honest into a game closer was the fact that its effect was not once per turn, and absolutely does stack with itself. So if you attacked into a strong enough monster, say a blue eyes white dragon with 3000 attack, you'd be able to deal damage to your opponent equal to the attack position monster you have, plus extra attack based on the attack of your opponent's monsters multiple times based on the amount of Honest that you stacked on top of each other. So, for example, if you use something like Cyber Twin Dragon to attack into a Blue Eyes White Dragon, and then use three copies of Honest, that would be 8800 points of damage to your opponents with only one of its attacks, which you can also do during your opponent's turn if they attack into your monster. Honest was such a menace at just grabbing quick wins that it was restricted on the ban list for years, and was only taken off of the ban list in the modern era, where battle hand traps like that don't really matter anymore. Modern Yu-Gi-Oh! is more about destroying cards before entering the battle phase, so usually there's no light monster to attack into, nor would you have any of your opponent's monsters to attack into, to really make much use of Honest, outside of a few control decks. So it's another card that's here for legacy reasons, kind of like the next card this list too. And at number 7, we have Gangaga Cowboy. This is a rank 4 Xyz monster with generic materials, and has two effects based on which battle position it's in when you detach one of its materials. Where if it's in attack position, this turn if it attacks an opponent's monster, it gains 1000 attack and causes your opponent's monster to lose 500 attack. And with the baseline attack of 1500, this basically means it could beat over any monster with less than 3000 attack. But its game closer ability was actually its defense position one, where it simply inflicted 800 points of damage to your opponent's life points. Now, this is actually a pretty small amount of damage. It's only one-tenth the amount of your opponent's starting life point value, so you would have to use the effect ten times if you wanted to win the game with Gagaga Cowboy alone. Although the best way Gagaga Cowboy was usually used was during the main phase too. You see, there's a lot of times in a duel where you're able to push for a whole bunch of damage, but your opponent is just hanging on by a little bit of life points, usually less than a thousand. 
than if you simply had two level 4 monsters left in the field, or a way to use up the rest of your resources to get into two level 4 monsters, you'd be able to close out the game with that last little bit of life point damage by just going into Gagaga Cowboy. And this scenario came up so often that Gagaga Cowboy was an absolute staple card in pretty much every extra deck until Link Monsters came out. It's kind of crazy how many games Gaga Cowboy was able to close out on its own with just a pitiful 800 points of damage. In fact, it was so widespread and prevalent that Konami is very hesitant about releasing cards that deal burn damage on extra deck cards that are too generic to go into like a Cowboy was. They don't want to create another situation where they can just go into Cowboy for game during the main phase too, so there were no Link Monster equivalents to Gaga Ga Cowboy, even if there are some Link Monsters that technically can inflict some burn damage. And the only reason Gaga Ga Cowboy stopped seeing play was because Link Monsters made it harder to use. And then after the Master World Revisions, where they released the restrictions on XC's monsters being summonable into any of your monster zones, this state of the game had gotten to the point where people were just no longer used to playing Gaga Ga Cowboy, and it wasn't really necessary because the power of the game had shifted away where that was really worth taking up your few precious extra deck slots. And at number 6, we have Arc Rebellion XYZ Dragon, or XC's Dragon, I don't actually know which one it is. This is one of the evolved versions of Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon from earlier on this list, and is definitely meant to be a ranked up version of it, as it's a rank 5 XC's Dragon that requires 3 level 5 monsters as materials to be brought out naturally. And it has the effect where this XC summoned card cannot be destroyed by card effects, and it basically just has one effect that has a whole bunch of restrictions attached to it. Where you can detach one of its materials in order for this card to gain attack equal to the total original attack of all other monsters on the field. Then, if this card has a Dark XC's monster on it as a material, you also get to negate the effects of all face of monsters in the field that it affected, with both of these effects being permanent. And finally, it has a restriction where you can only attack with this card for the rest of the turn. Now, the card itself is a little bit too hard to be brought out, which is why its effect is so good. If your opponent has a full board of monsters, you can theoretically gain attack points equal to all of them and just attack over one of your opponent's monsters and win, assuming the attacks of all the cards on the field was high enough. And with the baseline attack of 3000, it's pretty easy to get to a high enough value to deal more than 8000 points of damage. And it even has some nice protection, as being immune to destruction effects is by far one of the best forms of generic protection you can have. But what really makes this card see play as a game closer is the fact that this card is very easy to bring out with any two level 4 dark monsters, thanks to Raider's Knight. Raider's Knight is a rank 4 Xyz monster that requires two level 4 dark monsters as materials, and has an effect that allows it to detach one of its materials in order to special summon an Xyz dragon monster from your extra deck that's one rank higher or lower than this card, using itself as materials and treating it as a proper XC summon. However, the card it brings out is then destroyed during your opponent's next end phase. And technically, it also works on Phantom Knight or Raid Raptor XC's monsters too. But only the XC's dragon portion is relevant for this spot in the video. Now, since Arc Rebellion XYZ Dragon is rank 5, it obviously meets the conditions for Raider's Knight being a proper target. And since it's properly brought out, gains its destruction immunity, so it doesn't have to worry about the negative effects of Raider's Knight. And since Raider's Knight is a dark Xyz monster, it allows you to activate the extra effect of negating all other cards of the field. So thanks to Raider's Knight, any deck that plays level 4 dark monsters has the ability to instantly win the game if they're able to bring out a Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon and just attack over one of your opponent's monsters, which is why the card is so heavily played in Master Duel at the moment. And at number 5, we have Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Juggernaut Liba. This is a rank 11 monster which requires 3 level 11 monsters as its materials, or can be brought out on top of a rank 10 XC's machine monster, where you transfer all the materials from that monster to this card. This card has 4000 attack and defense baseline, and has the effect where you can detach one of its materials to gain 2000 attack and defense, but only this card can attack for the rest of the turn. Additionally, the card is able to attack a number of times on monsters equal to the amount of its XC's materials plus 1. So, if your opponent has 2 or more monsters with less than 2000 attack on their side of the field, you can deal more than 8000 points of damage by attacking into both of them with a 6000 attack Liba. Or, if your opponent has a clear field, you can deal exactly 8000 points of damage if you go into Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Gustav Max first. As Gustav Max is a rank 10 XC's monster, which has the effect to detach one of its materials in order to inflict 2000 points of burn damage to your opponent, which would bring your opponent's life point value from 8000 down to 6000, where you can then rank up into Liba, use its effect to boost its attack to 6000, and then attack directly for game. And because Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Gustav Max just requires any two level 10 monsters as its materials, any deck which has access to level 10 monsters has an OTK in their pocket thanks to this combo. 
Now, there aren't a lot of decks that run level 10 monsters natively, but this is definitely an option that can allow you to win the game on its own, assuming the conditions are correct for the OTK to be applied. This card can just be used to close out a game by attacking over two monsters, since most monsters don't have more than 6,000 attack, and are just sitting ducks for Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Juggernaut Liba to attack over. And at number 4, we have Borosaur Dragon. This is a Link 4 monster that just requires 3 plus effect monsters as materials, so pretty generic to go into. And it has 3 effects on the field, where passively it can't be destroyed by battle. On a quick effect, it can change an attack position monster to defense position in order to grant itself a second attack during the battle phase, with this quick effect being spell speed 4, so you can use it in order to chain block to an extent. And finally, once per turn, if this card declares an attack, it basically gains the effect of Dark Rebellion XYZ Dragon, where it cuts its attack's target attack in half, and then gains the attack points lost until the end of the turn. However, since Borosaur Dragon has an effect that allows it to attack twice, if you attack into a strong enough monster, like say Blue Eyes White Dragon, it will keep the extra 1500 attack boost on its next attack, which could be a direct attack since it's not limited to only monsters like Liba. Now, that's not enough to OTK your opponent with 8000 points of damage, but it is a ton of damage to deal nonetheless, and is incredibly easy to go into as it just requires any effect monsters as materials, rather than very specific levels or ranks like the previous cards on this list. So while it may not be dealing as much damage as something like Liba or Arc Rebellion Dragon, it's infinitely more usable because the materials are just so much more generic. And it was because of Borosaur Dragon that pretty much every archetype gained the ability to close out a game, whereas previously there were only a few archetypes that had that distinction, and it kind of pushed the game forward into a new era to an extent, where decks that could inherently OTK were no longer inherently valuable, because Borosaur Dragon gave that ability to everyone. Additionally, since it could gain a whole bunch of attack points by just attacking into something, even if it couldn't cut that monster's attack in half, it gave pretty much every deck an out to an unbeatable boss monster as well, since as I mentioned earlier on in this video, a lot of them only have the weakness of being destroyed by battle. So Borosaur Dragon simultaneously gave every deck a way to close out a game, and gave every deck a way to destroy your opponent's tower-like cards. And you would think that such a monumentally game-changing card like Borosaur Dragon would be higher on this list, but funny enough, it was actually power crept, and its job is taken by someone else, which we'll talk about later on. And at number 3, we have number 97, Draglubion. This is a generic rank 8 monster that just requires any two level 8 monsters as its materials, and has the effect where it cannot be targeted with card effects. Also, you can detach one of its materials in order to take two dragon number monsters with different names from your extra deck or graveyard, and special summon one of them to the field and attach the other one to it as a material. But then you cannot special summon other monsters for the rest of this turn, or attack with other monsters except for the special summon monster. So the card you bring out in order to close out the game is number 100 Numeron Dragon, which is normally a difficult to bring out card that requires two number XC's monsters of the same name and rank on the field as its materials, and it has the effect where it can detach one of its materials to gain attack equal to the rank of all XC's monsters currently on the field times 1000. And since Numeron Dragon itself counts as a rank 1 monster, and Draglubion is a rank 8 monster, that's 9000 attack points for Numeron Dragon, which is definitely enough damage in order to close out a game with a direct attack, or attacking over a monster with less than 1,000 attack. Or if your opponent has an Xyz monster out as well, it does also count them in its attack boost, which can get Numeron Dragon easily over 10,000 attack points. And since number 97 Draglubion can't be targeted by card effects, it's actually really hard to stop its effect from going off once it hits the field. And you have to wait for Numeron Dragon to hit the field in order to disrupt, and that card has a floating effect to destroy all of the monsters in the field. So Draglubion gives any deck that has the availability of level 8 monsters the ability to instantly win the game with more than 8,000 points of damage. Which is a distinction obviously shared by level 10 monsters thanks to Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon Juggernaut Liba, and of course level 4 monsters with the next card on this list. And at number 2, we actually have a dual spot with number 39 Utopia Double, and also number S39 Utopia the Lightning. I have both of these cards here at the same spot on this list because they're both brought out in the exact same way. If you have any two level 4 monsters on your side of the field, you can go into number 39 Utopia, and then immediately rank it up into Utopia the Lightning. Or you can even go into Utopia Double, and then immediately rank Utopia on top of Utopia Double, so both of them heavily revolve around the card number 39 Utopia. And what Utopia does is if a monster declares an attack, you can detach one of its materials in order to negate the attack. Additionally, if it has no materials, the card is destroyed if it is attacked. The effects of this card are pretty weak on its own, which is why it's usually used as a tool in order to go into a lot of the other Utopia Evolved versions. Number S39 Utopia the Lightning has the effect, 
where you can actually summon this card by using a rank 4 Utopia monster you control as its full materials and transfer all of its materials to this card. Which is how you want to bring the card out, because it's natively a rank 5 monster that requires 3 level 5 light monsters as materials, which is way too difficult of a summoning method, and it's obviously meant to just be ranked up on top of Utopia. And Utopia the Lightning has the effect, where if it battles an opponent's monster while it has Utopia as one of its materials, you can detach two of its materials in order to make this card's attack become 5,000 during damage calculation. Also, if this card attacks, your opponent can't activate any cards until the end of the damage step. And finally, this card cannot be used as an Xyz material, so you can't rank up anything on top of it. So if you bring out number 39 Utopia and then immediately rank it up into Utopia the Lightning, it will only have three Xyz material and won't be able to use this effect more than once. So usually, you would add one more material by going into either number S39 Utopia Prime, or number C39 Utopia Ray, which are two cards that can just be ranked up on top of the original Utopia and also count as proper targets for Utopia the Lightning to be brought out on top of them, giving you four Xyz materials and allowing you to use the effect twice. Utopia the Lightning allowed pretty much any deck that has level 4 monsters the ability to out a lot of unkillable boss monsters before Boros or Dragon was added to the game. And of course, it can be used to close out games as well, because having 5,000 attack on an effect that can't be stopped during the battle phase was just situationally very good, and it was a situation that came up pretty often. Utopia Lightning was so good in fact, that it was one of the few Xyz monsters that saw generic play during the early days of Master Rule 4, when pretty much every deck abandoned anything but Link monsters because of the restrictions. And then we have number 39 Utopia Double, which basically accomplishes the same thing but deals even more damage. This is a generic rank 4 monster which has the effect where you can detach one of its materials in order to add the card double or nothing from your deck to your hand. Then you can special summon a Utopia Xyz monster from your extra deck using this monster as a material, and if you do, its attack becomes doubled but it cannot attack directly. So what you do is use Utopia Double in order to bring out the number 39 Utopia, which will allow you to have 5,000 attack due to the attack boost. Double or Nothing is a quick play spell card which has the effect that if a monster attack is negated, you can allow that monster to attack again. However, its attack is then doubled during the damage step. So with your new 5,000 attack number 39 Utopia, you attack into one of your opponent's monsters with that 5,000 attack, then you use its own effect to negate its own attack, which will proc the effect of Double or Nothing to allow it to attack again with 10,000 attack. So if your opponent has a monster with less than 2,000 attack, that's an instant win, and easily allows it to beat over pretty much any monster in the game. Utopia Double deals so much battle damage that it's just a legit win condition on its own, in addition to being an excellent game closer. Although the difference between Utopia Double and Utopia the Lightning is that you do have to play a Garnet in your deck if you want to pull off the Utopia Double combo, since the effect does not work if you already have Double or Nothing in your hand. And usually, decks do not like to play both Utopia Lightning and Utopia Double, likely one or the other, but they both accomplish similar things of having very high attack monsters with only two level 4 monsters on your side of the field to start off their combos. And at number 1, we have Access Code Talker. This is a Link 4 monster that just requires two plus effect monsters as materials and has three effects, where firstly, your opponent cannot respond to the activation of any of its other two effects which basically grants its spell speed for protection, similar to Super Polymerization. Then, when this card is Link Summoned, if one of its materials was a Link Monster, you can select it in order to gain a thousand attack times that monster's Link rating. So, if a Link 3 monster was used, Axis Code Talker gains 3000 attack. And this attack crease is permanent, so Axis Code Talker usually comes out with four to 5000 attack. And lastly, it has a non-once-per-turn effect, where you can banish a Link monster from your field or graveyard in order to destroy one card your opponent controls without targeting it. However, if you use the effect, you aren't allowed to banish another Link monster of the same attribute for the rest of the turn to use it again. So you can only use the effect a total of six times natively before you run out of different attribute Link monsters. And since your opponent can't respond to this effect in order to negate it, and you're able to use it multiple times, Access Code Talker is an excellent way to clear out a lot of problem boss monsters or to just clear out anything since it can choose whatever it wants and doesn't target. So it gets over some forms of protections and more importantly, allows you to just play through your opponent's negates, since they can't negate it. And while Axis Code Talker isn't able to deal 10,000 points of damage like Utopia Double, being able to bring out a 5300 attack monster that's able to clear the field is one of the ultimate game closers. And in fact does such a good job at that that it's played almost exclusively over Borosaur Dragon now, who used to provide pretty much the same benefits. Borosaur Dragon was the ultimate generic Link monster to go into in order to get rid of indestructible boss monsters, but now you can do the same thing with Axis Code Talker and also get rid of everything else. 
So while it can't deal as much damage as Boros or Dragon, the ability to clear out everything while also dealing a ton of damage, while being able to ignore your opponent's negates, is just so much more useful. And it also has all the same benefits of Boros or Dragon where it's usable in pretty much every deck. In fact, it's even easier to go into, since it has completely generic materials and only requires 2 plus instead of 3 plus. So Axis Code Talker is the ultimate game closer card in the game, mainly because it's really good at what it does, and it's usable in the most amount of decks. Alright, and that's the list. Are there any other game closer cards I may have missed, or do you have any ideas for future videos just like this one? If so, I'd love to hear about those things down in the comments.